G'day guys, Benji here, and today I wanted to talk to you about my top three stocks going forward for March. And as you know, the past few weeks have been pretty rocky for the market, with the tech sector being hit especially hard. And I just want to know how you guys are doing, how you're all holding up. I know how tough these market conditions can actually be, and I hope you're all managing well. So whilst the market conditions have been pretty harsh, it's also created a lot of opportunity in the market to buy in or top up on companies you already own. However, I also do have somewhat of a pessimistic approach to the market, specifically the US market, and I just want to give you guys a brief run through of that. So first of all, I'm not a fan of their quantitative easing policy, their excessive money printing, uh, that's currently propping up their economy due to the hyperinflation it's inevitably going to cause. And in the future, they will be forced to raise interest rates to combat this hyperinflation. And it's just very concerning because if they do raise interest rates and their economy is currently, in my opinion, predicated on these quantitative easing schemes, I just don't know what's going to happen in the long term to the economy. So I've been bearing that in mind and it's honestly been impacting a lot of my stock decisions lately and it's going to help me hopefully in the future avoid some loss and make some better long-term gains. And I just wanted to keep that quite brief for this video. I didn't really want to go into too much detail on that topic given the fact that I just want to look at the top three stocks today. However, I'm more than happy to make a separate video on that topic if you guys are interested. Other than that, let's jump into the first stock on today's list. So the first one that I have on my watch list isn't really a company and what I mean by that is we're looking at Perth Mint Gold. Well Perth Mint Gold is essentially a right created on market by Gold Corporation to enable you to invest in gold on the ASX. PM Gold is structured as a call option in accordance with ASX operating rules and each share in PM Gold entitles you to one hundredth of a troy ounce of fine gold and may be exercised by the investor at any time. So the ASX price of PM Gold is intended to track closely the international over-the-counter spot price of gold unhedged in Australian dollars. So essentially, it gives investors exposure to the spot price of gold without actually having to buy physical gold, which makes it very convenient. So what are some of the benefits of investing in PM Gold? And I'm not just a gold bug, I do really think that there's some long-term benefits to holding this. And by buying PM Gold, you are owning an investment opportunity by the Gold Corporation, which is a statutory authority of the government of Western Australia, which gains you a government guaranteed right to acquire physical gold from Australia's leading precious metals mint. So as I spoke about in the intro in this video, I feel that holding either a large or small amount of gold can definitely be beneficial to an investor. Smaller holdings can be used as a hedge against both inflation and negative economic conditions as gold is seen as a safe haven for many investors. And whilst this is just my opinion, the more pessimistic you are about the state of the economy, perhaps the larger stake in PM Gold you might consider taking up. So what are some of the main risks surrounding purchasing ASX listed gold rather than physical gold? Well, besides the general market risks, there can be the potential of liquidity risks as well as a risk of non-performance by gold corporations. However, given the low cost of acquisition and maintenance, I think that the ASX listed gold is more beneficial to have overall. And I say this as an owner of physical silver, it can definitely be painful to move around and store safely. I mean, you don't really want to just have like six kilos of silver lying around your house or six kilos of gold. You might need to purchase a safety deposit box and there are a whole lot of other issues that come with it. So PM Gold as a stock takes away a lot of the difficulty uh, when purchasing. And whilst I already do hold commodities being physical silver, I'm still interested in further hedging my position by adding some gold to my portfolio. And I don't really want to have too much hassle with a physical transportation or storage. So I think the exchange listed route is a good option for me. And with the PM Gold shares being physically redeemable and government guaranteed, these seem like a pretty safe bet even for someone as pessimistic as me. So again, to reiterate, I do think we're going to be facing hyperinflation issues in the future and a lot of market instability and my hedge against this, I know some people prefer cryptocurrency, right now my approach is to be buying uh, commodities. Okay, so the next company I have on my watch list is Kogan. So for those who may not be familiar with Kogan, they are a pioneer of Australian e-commerce with a growing portfolio of retail and service businesses. Established in 2006 out of a garage, Kogan has since grown to be Australia's largest online retailer with hundreds of thousands of visitors daily. 
Now, as many of you will probably remember, during the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw a rush towards e-commerce and online adoption. This saw most e-commerce company sales absolutely skyrocket and grow more rapidly than before. And I know anecdotally speaking, when I was locked up in my house, I was buying more things that I actually didn't need. I think I even bought an air conditioner. Um, I, I bought a lot, more, a lot more LEDs, that's for sure. So I know in my own life, my spending on e-commerce platforms definitely went up and Kogan being no exception to that. Investor optimism towards e-commerce over brick and mortar stores. So Kogan's share price soared to its 52 week high at $25.57. However, it has since dropped significantly, especially with how hard tech stocks are currently being hit. Now Kogan stands at $13.03 at the time of recording this video. So this has definitely caught my attention, especially given how positive their latest results have been. And looking at Kogan Group's first half FY21 financial results, we do see some pretty explosive growth here with gross sales up 97.4%, revenue up 88.6%, a 27.3% gross margin and net profit after tax up a whopping 164.2%. So definitely some really impressive figures there from Kogan. And I think this growth was mostly driven by COVID and with vaccines on the horizon, it is not surprising to see some of that optimism deflate. However, Kogan definitely looks enticing at its current price given these numbers. And you can see that both Kogan and the brand it acquired, Mighty Ape, have grown their total active customers. And you can also see the variety of products and services Kogan actually offers. So this company is definitely one for my watch list. I feel like it's definitely hovering around or close to a fair value figure. And if they can maintain this growth into the future, I definitely think good things might come to Kogan. On the flip side, however, much of Kogan's financial growth could be due to COVID and with restrictions eased, they may struggle to reach that sort of profit and revenue growth again, especially given the fact that their customer base didn't explode in the same way their financials did. So I have added Kogan to my watch list because I feel that it is close to a fair value amount and I like the business model for a long-term hold. I know I've definitely bought from Kogan multiple times. The service is good, the products are good, and I've overall had a good first-hand experience with the company, which is definitely very promising. Now this next company on this list, I've spoken about a fair bit and it has been a point of a bit of controversy as of late and that next company is Newix. So for this next one, because we've just spoken about it so much, if you want more information on what the company does and why they've been hit so hard, then definitely check out my other videos on this. And since I made that video, however, we have seen Newix continue to decline, especially given the fact that tech stocks have been hit quite hard. But with Newix now well below the IPO price of $5.31, many investors are starting to wonder what is going on, should they sell, should they buy in? And I think that with Newix, this is definitely a case where a stock is oversold. Whilst I do think the disappointing results they came out with definitely warrant a hit to the share price, the severity of what's happened to Newix is not really proportionate. So let me explain. Newix's $5.31 listing price is what was determined to be a fair value of the company at that point in time, plus factoring in the forecasted cash flows and growth. However, with COVID difficulties affecting the company's operations, investors have definitely pulled back from Newix significantly, causing the share price to fall quite a bit. So briefly, Newix's financials aren't actually that bad in my opinion. We do see some difficulty due to COVID, however, the revenue only dropped 4%. Okay, so let's compare that to Levisa, whose revenue took a 9.8% hit due to COVID, but saw its share price actually increase. So the difference in reaction here is quite interesting. And I think it is important to remind yourself that Newix is a well-established company with a history of profitability. They aren't a brand new tech stock with a lot of debt and no profit. So that's actually a good sign. And additionally, Newix has a clear plan going forward. So whilst Newix's performance as a share price has been quite disappointing, I really think the market reaction to these results has been really disproportionate. I've added this to my watch list to be closely looked at because I think that at its current price, it is well oversold and provides a really good entry point for a long-term investor looking in the five plus year range. And this thing is just walking around like a downbeaten dog and I just don't think it's fair. So definitely for me, this could be looking like a very solid long-term hold. Thanks guys for watching. And I know the past few weeks have been pretty crazy. So I hope you're all holding up well. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this list, what you're buying, what you're selling and your general sentiment about the market. Please remember guys, these videos don't constitute financial advice. Always do your own research. Of course, all these stock picks are just my opinion. And at the end of the day, I'm just some dude on the internet 
<laughs> with some opinions on stocks. So make sure to always do your own research. Definitely don't just go off what I'm saying in these videos. If you have watched until this point, consider hitting that subscribe button, maybe clicking like, and we'll catch you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.